And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The Guardian newspapers reveal the National Security Agency has a secret backdoor into its vast databases to search for email and phone calls of U.S. citizens without a warrant. According to documents leaked by Edward Snowden, NSA operatives can hunt for individual Americans' communications using their name or other identifying information. The Guardian published the article on Friday, just hours before President Obama held a news conference about the NSA. While Obama repeatedly defended the NSA surveillance operations, he outlined four proposals for reforming the programs. I will work with Congress to pursue appropriate reforms to Section 215 of the Patriot Act, the program that collects telephone records. As I've said, this program is an important tool in our effort to disrupt terrorist plots, and it does not allow the government to listen to any phone calls without a warrant. But given the scale of this program, I understand the concerns of those who would worry that it could be subject to abuse. So after having a dialogue with members of Congress and civil libertarians, I believe that there are steps we can take to give the American people additional confidence that there are additional safeguards against abuse. For instance, we can take steps to put in place greater oversight, greater transparency, and constraints on the use of this authority. So I look forward to working with Congress to meet those objectives. Second, I'll work with Congress to improve the public's confidence in the oversight conducted by the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, known as the FISC. The FISC was created by Congress to provide a judicial review of certain intelligence activities so that a federal judge must find that our actions are consistent with the Constitution. However, to build greater confidence, I think we should consider some additional changes to the FISC. One of the concerns that people raise is that a judge reviewing a request from the government to conduct programmatic surveillance only hears one side of the story, may tilt it too far in favor of security, may not pay enough attention to liberty. And while I've got confidence in the court, and I think they've done a fine job, I think we can provide greater assurances that the court is looking at these issues from both perspectives, security and privacy. So specifically, we can take steps to make sure civil liberties concerns have an independent voice in appropriate cases by ensuring that the government's position is challenged by an adversary. Number three, we can and must be more transparent. So I've directed the intelligence community to make public as much information about these programs as possible. We've already declassified unprecedented information about the NSA, but we can go further. So in my direction, the Department of Justice will make public the legal rationale for the government's collection activities under Section 215 of the Patriot Act. The NSA is taking steps to put in place a full-time civil liberties and privacy officer and released information that details its mission, authorities, and oversight. And finally, the intelligence community is creating a website that will serve as a hub for further transparency. And this will give Americans and the world the ability to learn more about what our intelligence community does and what it doesn't do, how it carries out its mission, and why it does so. Fourth, we're forming a high-level group of outside experts to review our entire intelligence and communications technologies. We need new thinking for a new era. We now have uh, to unravel terrorist plots by finding a needle in a haystack of global telecommunications. And meanwhile, technology has given governments, including our own, unprecedented capability to monitor communications. President Obama <clears throat> speaking at his news conference on Friday. To discuss his remarks in the NSA leaks, we go to Los Angeles to speak with Jennifer Holzer, who served as deputy chief of staff for Democratic Senator Ron Wyden, one of the Senate's leading critics of the NSA. Jennifer Holzer went to school at the U.S. Naval Academy and spent two years interning for the National Security Council. The website TechDirt has just published a piece of hers entitled Insider's View of the Administration's Response to NSA Surveillance Leaks. Jennifer Holzer, welcome to Democracy Now! Your response to what President Obama has just outlined around changes to NSA surveillance. Um, 
If I had heard this speech five years ago, I would be standing up and applauding. I think he says a lot of terrific things, and it's a, definitely a step in the right direction. My concern is that over the past five years, his actions have painted a much different picture, and um, it's we need a little bit more than rhetoric here and vague promises about transparency. And I, I think it's encouraging that we're moving in this direction, but I'd like to see more. Um, President Obama said in his news conference, he talked about Edward Snowden. Um, this is mm -hmm. what he had to say. No, I don't think Mr. Snowden was a patriot. Uh, as I said in my opening remarks, I called for a thorough review of our surveillance operations before Mr. Snowden made these leaks. My preference, and I think the American people's preference, would have been for a lawful, orderly examination of these laws, a uh, thoughtful, fact-based debate uh, that would then lead us to a better place. Uh, because I never made claims that all the surveillance uh, technologies that uh, have developed since the time some of these laws had been put in place uh, somehow didn't require potentially some additional reforms. That's exactly what I called for. Um, so the fact is, is that Mr. Snowden has been charged with three felonies. Um, if, in fact, he believes that what he did was right, then, like every American citizen, he can come here, appear before the court uh, with a lawyer, uh, and make his case. Um, if the concern was that somehow this was the only way to get this information out to the public, I signed an executive order well before Mr. Snowden leaked this information uh, that provided whistleblower protection to the intelligence community for the first time. So there were other avenues available for somebody whose conscience was stirred and thought that uh, they needed to question uh, government actions. That is President Obama's news conference on Friday. Jennifer Holzer, your response. Um, it's very hard to hear that, <laughs> to be honest. Um, to lo know a little bit about me, I, uh, I worked for Senator Ron Wyden for, for six years, and, and Senator Wyden, um, his conscience did move him to try to speak up about these things and try to draw attention and try to start a debate. And quite frankly, there were no other avenues to bring this information to light. Um, when the president tries to, to make it sound like, you know, he was already moving us in this direction, um, we, he had five years to do that. <laughs> and I, you know, I—, I we, you could see on Senator Wyden's, you know, website. I think we put out up a timeline. You know, it was our frustration of how many times, you know, we asked the administration to declassify information so that we could have a public debate on these issues, um, where we asked them to slow down because Congress didn't know what it was voting on and didn't know what the authorities, the you know, administration was claiming to have. And you know, I, I think as somebody who I'm fairly confident, you know, having worked for him, and and, and keep in mind, I was his deputy chief of staff, and he couldn't even. Even tell me, you know, what programs he was attempting to conduct oversight over. Uh, that there, there was no way. I, mean, I think we left no stone unturned to try to bring these issues to light. Obviously, I'm concerned. You know, as is the president. The only way we seem to be able to have this debate was through an unauthorized disclosure. Um, we, we, our national security policy should be such that there is a respect for classification procedures, and that you know whistleblowers don't feel a need to come forward with this information. Um, I, I share his concern. It would have been much, much better had we been able to have this debate and under more rational circumstances with facts coming out on both sides. But the fact of the matter is the president of the United States had five years to, to make that happen, and, and he didn't. And I find that concerning. And I'm glad he's coming to the table now. And I, I think hope he's sincere. And I hope he you know puts the muscle behind this that he claims to be doing. Um, but I think I think his track record thus far does not show a personal uh, commitment from him or many members of his administration to make that happen. So you think this is all happening because of Edward Snowden now? Um, I mean, yeah, I, th I think it is happening because this information is brought to light. And, you know, it's I, I was talking to, to a former colleague last night about this, that, you know, for many years, you know, we we tried to have a debate on these issues. And there's a very different um, when the public does not know what's happening, when the public gets all theoretical 
arguments. One, you know, reporters don't cover theoretical arguments. I mean, there's a lot of theories. They cover facts, and the American people grapple on the facts, and that's when they start calling their members of Congress, and that's when we have a debate. And no facts are being brought to light. And we, um, working for Senator Wyden, did everything to try to encourage the administration to bring these facts to light. You know, we're not talking about sources and methods. We're not talking about class of, you know, sensitive materials. We're talking about what they believed the loss allows them to do. Um, and that's up to the American people to have an ability to, you know, approve, say yes or no. This is what we want the government to be doing. And they didn't give them that chance. And um, unfortunately, Edward. Snowden, you know, was the only means by which we've been able to have that chance in this debate. Let's go to your former boss, to Democratic Senator Ron Wyden. In 2011, he warned about how the government was interpreting uh, its surveillance powers under Section 215 of the Patriot Act. When the American people find out how their government has secretly interpreted the Patriot Act, they are going to be stunned and they are going to be angry. And they're going to ask senators. Did you know what this law actually permits? Why didn't you know before you voted on it? The fact is, anyone can read the plain text of the Patriot Act, and yet many members of Congress have no idea how the law is being secretly interpreted by the executive branch because that interpretation is classified. It's almost as if there were two Patriot Acts, and many, many members of Congress have not read the one that matters. Our constituents, of course, are totally in the dark. Members of the public have no access to the secret legal interpretations, so they have no idea what their government believes the law actually means. That's uh, Senator Ron Wyden in 2011. Um, Jennifer Holzer, in your piece in Tector, you quote President Obama saying, what makes us different from other countries is not simply our ability to secure our nation. It's the way we do it, with open debate and democratic process. So if you mm -hmm. could go—I mean, I thought what was so amazing about uh, your piece in Tector is how you described how you were able to talk or not talk about these issues when President Obama is talking about we do it with open debate and democratic process. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's why—and it, it, it's—that it's, it, that piece that I wrote, you know, it, 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 I, I think if I had stepped back, I may have, might have, you know, pulled back a little bit. I was I was quite angry when, when I read that, that remark, because, again, I spent um, close to a thousand hours of my life trying to draw attention and trying to push for exactly that, a public debate on these issues, um, on what the administration believes a unclassified law that you or I or anyone else can read says and allows them to do. Um, you know, Congress writes these laws, and then Congress needs to know how, you know, these laws are being interpreted. Are they being interpreted the way Congress intended to be interpreted? So, Jennifer, case, give us I mean, the, give us the example. The, um, give us the example, Jennifer. Here. I mean, everything else has come to light, and, 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 and that's the one thing that hasn't. Um, although I, I believe the president has, has committed to, to, you know, unclassifying that. But, you know, it's— it's, I believe, a misuse of the classification systems to classify things that could be embarrassing or politically embarrassing or inconvenient or, you know, just a legal interpretation that, yes, it's — and I think that's where we need actual classification reform, so that, you know, we are classifying national secrets, not information that might be embarrassing or might um, lead to a debate that, that could take away authorities that they think they should have. Jennifer, you write, um, be, um, it seems to me you're talking, uh, you're addressing President Obama. Your administration um, <clears throat> was really committed <clears throat> that if your administration was really committed uh, to those things, your administration wouldn't have blocked every effort to have an open debate on these issues each time the laws of your administration claims authorizes these programs came up for reauthorization, which, correct me if I'm wrong, is when the democratic process recommends is the ideal time for these debates. And then you give examples, like in June 2009, six months before Congress would have had to reauthorize uh, Patriot Act uh, 215. Explain. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, it is. I mean, 
the, these laws, the Patriot Act and then the FISA Amendments Act, they were both passed with sunset provisions. And the, the idea of that is that, you know, these are controversial provisions that are going into new areas of law and that Congress wants to revisit those laws, you know, a few years later to see how they're working to make sure, do we need to fine tune it? Do we need to take powers away, add powers? I mean, it's supposed to be a review process. And in each of these cases, when the, you know, Patriot Act did come up for reauthorization first in 2000, and then again in 2011, um, there was no ability to have that debate. Um, Senator Wyden did, um, right when President Obama became into office, I think they, and I don't know the full extent of my boss's work on this because, again, he did it in a classified setting, but there was a number of letters, there was a number of conversations trying to, you know, assuming that the president who, who let's, let's not forget, he came into office, you know, promising a new era of transparency that, you know, he as a senator was a Opposed to many of these programs in theory and, and, and in practice. And so I think they assumed that he would um, be moving in a different direction. And when he didn't do that, I believe it was uh, November of 2009, um, both the senator and his, his intelligence committee staffer, you know, came to me and they sat down and said, we, um, we need to start drawing attention to these issues. <laughs> and, and it was a very, you know, you know, difficult conversation as it was for the following, you know, four years in which, you know, they're trying to tell me that, 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 that we need to draw attention the things that they couldn't, you know, give me details or, or even tell me what they were trying to, to get me to draw attention to. Um, but they were at that point, you know, right before they're about to vote, they, they, they stressed that members of Congress are going to vote on something that they didn't know the full extent of. And, and so that's when we, you know, in an unclassified way, started coming forward and saying, you know, trying to put public pressure on the administration to, you know, declassify this information. Um, but they, they didn't do it then. They didn't do it in an unclassified setting. They didn't do it when it was brought to their attention in 2009. And they didn't do it again in 2011. <laughs> and they didn't do it, you know, a few months ago when, when Senator Wyden in a, in a hearing actually asked, you know, um, the director of national intelligence a direct question, you know, was he collecting, um, was the National Security Agency collecting data on, on millions, if not hundreds of millions of Americans? And, and you know, he chose to lie and, and, and answer that question. And, you know, the president didn't, you know, speak up to correct him then so we could have a public debate with, with the facts that he, he believes are important. Um, and it's, it's, it's troubling in my mind that, mm -hmm. you know, we, we tried everything we could and, and you know, there, there was no give on that side. Um, General Hayden's um, characterizations about the people who are critical and want more information, you write about this in your piece. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I think, you know, what I find most troubling, and it's, it's, it's hard because I know members of Congress aren't in a position often to, to do what I'm doing right now, which is to, to say, you know, look, this, our national security policy, you know, there's something troubling here. I think since September 11th, there's been this, you know, push in this country that um, the, the debate around national security has been who can sound the toughest on national security policy. You know, the only way to, to be tough on national security policy is to demonstrate a willingness to go to extreme measures. Well, you know, how often in life is the extreme, the, the most extreme approach, the, the smartest and the best way to handle any situation? I mean, oftentimes it creates more problems than it solves. But we have this political debate that it's about, you know, who can sound mo more extreme, who can sound more tough. Well, I don't want us to sound tough. I want us to be smart. And I think that's the problem is when, you know, folks like General Hayden step in and, you know, you, you question them, they, they get offended and they talk about their patriotism. They talk about national security and how they're, they're willing to do whatever it takes to keep this country safe. And, and I am too. I just sometimes think that it's, it's important to step back and, and evaluate that. And that's honestly, you know, what oversight is about. It's about taking a step back from some of these programs and asking ourselves, is, is this working as well as it should be? Is this the best approach to the situation? Are we making things worse? Um, you know, I want to keep Americans safe, and I want to do it in the smartest and the best way possible. And I don't think a lot of, you know, trumped up machismo is the way to do it. Um, and I think it does. It lends to a situation where, where folks like me and, and, and Senator Wyden and, and, you know, a lot of passionate people out there and, and you know, 
many of these communities who are expressing concerns, I think the response often is that, that they don't care about national security. And it is. I, I have increasingly been troubled that, you know, the response that you get from some in those communities, and, and these are patriotic Americans who, who go to work every day to try to keep Americans safe. I don't doubt that. But I'm troubled that the response to, to those, you know, who are expressing concerns is is to treat them in some sense like they're a threat equal to Al Qaeda. And um, well, no, as I mean, you directly quoted, love, you as know, you directly by, quoted, you know, Jennifer, people, yeah. Jennifer, as you directly quoted the NSA director, uh, you said, um, uh, who called the critics nihilist anarchist activist, <laughs> lulsack anonymous, twenty somethings <laughs> who haven't talked to the opposite sex in five or six years. He equates transparency groups like the ACLU with Al Qaeda. Um, Jennifer Holzer, I want to thank you very much for being with us, former Deputy Chief of Staff for Democratic Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon. Her piece in TechDirt is headlined, Insider's View of the Administration's Response to NSA Surveillance Leaks. We will link to it at democracynow.org.